Hi, I'm Jason Myers, a content manager at Influx Data. I'm here today with Paul Dix, our founder and CTO. And today we're talking about Apache Parquet. So Paul, the first question to you is simply, what is Apache Parquet? It's a columnar data file format. Now it supports different encoding and compression schemes to optimize it for dealing with data in bulk. It also supports encoding and compression on a per column basis, which means individual columns can be compressed, optimizing the amount of storage that you use. So for example, dictionary and RLE encoding are supported. It has support for a wide variety of data types, so numerical data, textual data, and structured data like JSON. It's also built around nested data structures using the record shredding and assembly algorithm first described in the Dremel paper that came out of Google. Okay. Uh, so what libraries, or, sorry, what languages have libraries that work with Parquet? So because Parquet is part of the Apache Arrow project, it has support for a wide number of languages. So Java, C++, Python, R, Ruby, JavaScript, Rust, and Go are all supported. Well, that sounds like there's a lot of great options there. Thinking in terms of broader interoperability, what uh, does the technology landscape look like for working with Parquet? Well, it was first built with the Apache Hadoop ecosystem in mind to do data interchange there. But since then, it's gotten adoption from a bunch of other open source projects. So Delta Lake, Apache Iceberg, and also InfluxDB 3.0 all support Parquet. Basically, all these projects, they're building around object storage with Parquet files and an elastic query tier that processes those files are using Parquet as a data interchange format. Okay, what kind of metadata does Parquet support? So to optimize you know, how much I.O. you have to do and how much compute you have to do to deal with these files, it supports metadata on a per column basis. So you can store things like the min, the max value, bloom filters, and all of these things will help your query planner and executor optimize for what it has to read and decode from the Parquet file. Okay, so that's gr great information about Parquet itself. Thinking about InfluxDB 3.0, how does, uh, or what advantages does Parquet bring to 3.0? Like how do we uh, structure our data to work with, with Parquet? Well, one of the first advantages is obviously this ecosystem compatibility, it makes it easy to exchange data, to write, to write data in in bulk, and also to export data in bulk in the Parquet format. Now what we've done is we've taken the InfluxDB data model of measurements, tags, and fields, and map that into Parquet. So okay. at the top, you have a measurement, and that maps to one or more Parquet files, right? So a single Parquet file has all the data for a given measurement. And within that, obviously, the columnar format, you have tags, fields, and the time that all map into individual columns in Parquet. And again, those columns can use different encoding schemes to get the best possible compression. And what we've seen in our testing is that data in InfluxDB 3.0 actually compresses better than it has in previous versions of InfluxDB. Well, that's great. Uh, what's going on down here with these different files? Well, that's the last bit. So to optimize for query performance, we make sure that we organize the data in non-overlapping time ranges. So we have here three example Parquet files, all for the same measurement. And we have time t of 1 to t of n in this one file, and time t of n plus 1 to t of 0 in this other file, and, and so on. So there are a number of things that are cool about this. The first is if you want to get the data for a specific time range and it's actually contained in one file, you, you can just get that file and it's much faster than a query. The other nice thing is that you can drop those files if you want to drop your data in bulk to evict data and save on space. The other piece about organizing them in non-overlapping ranges is it makes it so that we can optimize queries. We can look at the time range of a query and select only the files that we have to pick to answer it. Or if we're spanning across multiple files, we can efficiently combine them together without having to do all sorts of crazy sorts and extra work. Well, that's awesome. Seems like it's a really, really great solution for uh, InfluxDB 3.0. Uh, so, Paul, I really appreciate the information. Hopefully that was useful for you as well, and we cannot wait to see what you build a bit.